Good afternoon, everybody. Time for another BrickBucks update. Once again, my name is Jim, and this is where we talk about Lego investing and reselling. So today we're going to go over my year, last year, 2020. I knew I was going to put this video out eventually. I just wasn't sure when and how I was going to do this. I have seen people put out their year totals, uh, not necessarily for Lego, but for uh, uh, resellers in, in other areas as soon as January uh, hits. And that that wasn't me. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, th this might sound a little bit silly to some people, but I wasn't necessarily worried about how much money I made last year. The reason why that was, was because, you know, this is for me a journey that isn't going to stop for many, many years. I kind of had an idea where I was w w when it came to uh, an estimated total of, of where I was, but I'm going to be honest, I really wasn't worried uh, about how much money I made. If you recall the video I did maybe a month or so ago, it, it was my, my top ROIs for 2020 and my lowest ROIs for 2020. You know, that is a lot more important to me because I want to figure out that information as soon as the year is over and analyze that information and apply it to this year whenever I plan on doing a lot of buying. So that's why this video is coming out in March versus January. Now, I do want to warn people, I am going to kind of slow walk uh, this video. I do on occasion get emails from people that says, hey, you, you know, you just take too long on your videos, which, you know, is surprising because they're only around 10 or 12 <laughs> minutes. But the reason why I'm slow walking, and I think this is important, is because this video I'm trying to gear towards the beginner Lego investor and also the beginner Lego investor that is very close to becoming a intermediate Lego investor. They already have maybe a couple years under their belt and they're wanting to look for a little bit of insight on, on what they can do to achieve better results. So let's talk about Q1. I'm not sure how other Lego investors anticipate what their sales are going to be but i know pre-covid and and you know last year it was quite different you know i will have a strong two weeks in january because there's a lot of overlap from december right and then when february comes i mean it's going to drop like a falling knife i, I i'm going to go from uh, five figures to probably four figures and that's just the way it is and then as spring comes along it, it's going to continue to be uh, four figures, but 2020 was quite different. So let's get into it. January, I really didn't do too bad. I came in uh, at almost 20,000, which was kind of anticipated. When February came around, I mean, this this is where I was at. When I talk about a falling knife, I'm not joking. I Not only did I expect uh, February to come out like this, I expected the next five or six months to come out like this, but guess what? Here comes COVID. And let me tell you, this was quite a surprise. You know, I had a lot of things going on. I had open heart surgery. I, I had just, I, w there was COVID coming. I just wasn't even thinking about Lego sales, but you, you know, I, I did pretty respectable whenever it, it comes to my March sales. And you're going to see, you know, when people say that last year was the biggest bull run for Lego ever, they're not joking. It, it was quite, quite a good year. Now, when Q4 came around, this is, I would say, the first full month uh, that COVID hit. A lot, there was a lot of people at the beginning of March. I mean, they were, they were grabbing toilet paper just to be safe, but they weren't grabbing much of anything else uh, and let me tell you folks there's a lot of people out there that don't get it during the housing recession i know a lot of people that made money and and i'm, I'm just going to give an example i knew i knew two or three people that were in cable television sales and you would think that they make you know okay decent money but during the 08 recession these people were driving around in Cadillacs, and I'm not joking. I mean, they, they were having a tremendous year. You know, it, it's kind of like the, the way it was last year, too. I mean, there there was, I mean, when it comes to unemployment, everybody knows that story. I mean, the unemployment numbers, they were depressing. They, they really were. 
But there was a lot of Lego, a lot of toys that, that were being sold because, you, you know, parents wanted to keep their kids occupied while they worked. When May came around, uh, that for me, there was a dip. And let me tell you, I had a lot of inventory, I believe, that sh should have sold this year that sold last year just because people were clawing to get their hands on things for their children. So May was not as good as April, but honestly, I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, when June came around, I couldn't believe June. June was fantastic. Now, before we get into our third quarter, I do want to talk a little bit about our Patreon that we have. It's, it's for premium members. Uh, last week, we had somebody who uh, was ungated on Amazon, and we celebrated that. Uh, two weeks prior, we celebrated a, another Patreon member who, who was ungated. And, you know, I really don't like to talk about uh, the Patreon too much. The reason why I'm mentioning it is because I see people maybe a couple times a week. They come on the Facebook group and they say to to the, the masses, you know, is there any way that somebody could help me getting ungated on Amazon? And there's crickets, right? There, there's either crickets or there's people that are saying, you know, people just aren't going to share that information. If you're a serious Lego investor, you want to come on our Patreon. We're gonna help you get ungated with Amazon. We're also going to, to share with you my top picks, the, the Lego picks that I believe are going to have the 200 to 300% return on investment. So feel free to check it out. Now, whenever we go into the third quarter, you know, things started to taper off a little bit. The stimulus checks were, were no longer there. They were already spent. Uh, August was pretty much very similar uh, to July. Now, when September came, you could kind of see an uptick because, you know, school was starting to, to start again. And some people, you know, had situations where they just, they, they just needed... Uh, to purchase toys or other things to keep their kids uh, occupied. Now let's talk about fourth quarter. For me, fourth quarter started to look very good. But the problem with the fourth quarter was I knew that I was going to start to have a serious issue. And that was uh, my issue was that I was going to start to run out of inventory. And the problem I had was I had a ton of inventory that was on hand, but it just didn't mature enough to where I could just release it. I had already lowered the price a little bit, and I wasn't in the position where I was going to lower the price anymore. I, I refused to do that. And if that meant that I was not going to have a successful Q4, I'm, I'm fine with that. So my, no <laughs> my November sales were not impressive at all. Uh, but uh, the good news is, you know, once Black Friday hit, once uh, the, 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 the Cyber Week hit uh, after uh, Thanksgiving, it was off to the races again. I, that, my, my U.S. Capitals started flying. I had so many sets that were just, whoo, they were on their way out the door. So... It was a very tumultuous year for me. This was a year that I sure as heck did not expect. Now, in conclusion, when we go to my final sales, my sales total for last year was 263332 That and change, that is the number that is on my 1099. Now, my question to you is, what do you call a reseller's performance that sold as much Lego as I did? A good start. So, you, you know, I'm really not the kind of person that high fives and does a lot of celebrating. Whenever I, I purchased my first house, I, I had a lot of family members and friends that are like, how come you're not high fiving? I said, because I, I bought a nice, modest starter home. I, I said, you know, it's what I did was good, but this was the beginning of, of a longer goal. So, you know, th this is good, but I have my eye on many, many things uh, down the road. 
Now, I do want to talk about the salary I paid myself. I paid myself a little bit over $20,000. And when I say $20,000, I think I was somewhere around $20,100, $20,200. And $20,000 went to my student loans. I didn't draw a salary. I didn't, you know, buy a car with it. I, I you know, paid a ton of student loan uh, debt off with that because... Back in April, May, there was no Lego that was discounted on Amazon, if everybody remembers that. So I said to myself, I don't know what I should do with this money. So I'm, I'm going to withdraw a lot of money and I'm just going to kill a lot of interest uh, with, with my student loan uh, debt. And that's what I did. Now, I also, you, you know, at the same time, I don't want to make it sound like I put a, a ton of money back into Lego. I mean, I did, uh, but at the same time, during the course of last year, I had $53,000 plus in credit card debt that I paid off. And that was all purchased with Lego. I, I mean, I, I was I was leveraging uh, my, my credit card debt. I don't want to say I'm an expert at it now, but I, I, I know how to leverage credit card debt very well. I, I, I've shared with people during a, a 10 month period, I leverage so much credit card debt that within a 10 month period, my credit score goes from 750 to 590 all the way back up to 800. That, and that is no joke. I, I mean, I have family members that are fainting <laughs> whenever I tell them what I'm doing. So a lot of it did go to, to other debt and a lot of it, I just paid out, you know, straight cash and, and, and purchased Lego with. So, you know, that's my sales for uh, 2020. I'm curious to hear what, what your thoughts were, um, you, you know, and I just want to end it with that's a good number. But I know many people that do so much more than that. I, and I, I mean, I know people that do lower. I know people that do so much higher. And it's this is not a competition with your fellow reseller. If, if, if you if they're in your network and, and you're using them to, to help you and they're using you to, to help them, none of this is a competition. You should be celebrating their success and they should be selling uh, celebrating yours as well. All right, folks, that's it. Once again, I'm Jim with BrickBucks.net. Always go out there and get it.